Located along the northwest of Portugal, the city of Porto, meaning port in Portuguese, stands as a hidden gem, attracting over 1.5 million visitors every year. Nicknamed Cidade Invicta, the unvanquished city Porto lives up to its name after successfully resisting attack from its enemies in the 19th century. This beautiful Portuguese city provides an unforgettable journey through well-preserved, cobbled streets, cultural heritage, and exquisite wine cellars. From the beautiful Palacio Cristal Gardens to the serene beauty of the Douro Valley, here are the 23 best places to visit in Porto, Portugal. 23. Downtown Porto Downtown Porto, also known as Baixa, is located on the north bank of the Dodo River, directly opposite the town of Vila Nova de Gaia. This area is relatively small and walkable, making it an ideal place for exploring on foot. Here, you can enjoy the scenic beauty of the Hibeda district along the riverfront, famous for its colorful houses and traditional boats. Moving upwards to the Se district, it's home to the iconic Porto Cathedral and the São Francisco Church. These landmarks are not just architectural marvels, but also repositories of the city's history. You often find yourself drawn to the São Francisco Church, renowned for its ornate Baroque interior, which features gilded wood carvings and azulejos, the painted tiles that are a characteristic element of Portuguese architecture. Another notable site is the Palacio da Bolsa, a UNESCO World Heritage Site celebrated for its neoclassical architecture and opulent interior. If you're looking to enjoy panoramic views of the city, Torres dos Clérigos is a must-visit. This iconic tower allows for a unique vantage point over Porto offering breathtaking sights that span across the urban landscape. Downtown Porto also offers unique experiences, such as wine tasting in Villa Nova de Gaia, where you can learn about the history of port wine and indulging tastings, and the traditional Portuguese music genre, Fado. Known for its melancholic sound, can be experienced in many of Porto's restaurants and bars, offering a glimpse into the local culture and lifestyle. 22. Crystal Palace Gardens In the Crystal Palace Gardens atop a hill in Porto, time seems to stand still. Originally designed and developed in the 19th century for the 1865 International Exhibition of Porto, it overlooks the Douro River, where its gardens offer panoramic views of the city and the river. This area has become a favorite for both locals and tourists, serving as a peaceful retreat from daily life. The gardens are divided into several sections, each with its unique appeal. The Rose Garden is home to over 500 rose bushes, showcasing a variety of colors and fragrances. Nearby, the Rose Romantic Garden features winding paths, fountains, and sculptures that create a serene atmosphere. The Sensory Garden is designed to engage all five senses, with plants chosen for their diverse textures, smells, and sounds, providing a rich, immersive experience. The gardens are alive with peacocks roaming freely, adding an element of natural beauty and intrigue. The Romantic Museum, located in the 19th century mansion, showcases the history of Romanticism in Portugal, adding a cultural dimension to the visit. You're encouraged to explore the gardens on foot or bike, enjoy a picnic, or visit the thematic gardens for a closer look at the diverse plant life. 21. Clérigos Church the Clérigos Church is right in the center of Porto's historic district within the Vitoria Parish. Built between 1735 and 1750, it was an ambitious project by the Brotherhood of Clerics, aiming to symbolize their power and wealth. The Torre dos Clérigos was intended to surpass the height of the Sé Cathedral, but construction was halted due to financial constraints. The church itself is a standout example of Baroque architecture, featuring an elliptical floor plan detailed carvings, and ornate gilded woodwork. For those willing to climb the 240 steps to the top of the tower, the reward is a breathtaking 360-degree view of Porto. Adjacent to the church, the Clérigos Museum houses a collection of religious art sculptures and artifacts that tell the story of the church's history. The church also has a mysterious side, with legends of a ghost of a monk who met a violent end there in the 18th century. Right next to the Clérigos Church is the Livraria Lelo, a historic bookstore that's become a destination for book lovers and Harry Potter fans alike, rumored to be an inspiration for the series. 20. Igreja dos Carmelitas You find your way to Igreja dos Carmelitas, a remarkable spot in the Vitoria Parish of Porto, Portugal. This site isn't just about the church itself, it's part of a fascinating ensemble. Included in this ensemble are the Igreja da Carmo, the Capella das Almas, also known as the Chapel of Souls, and the Casa Escondida, the world's narrowest house. The construction of Igreja dos Carmelitas started in 1616, wrapping up in 1628, but it wasn't until 1650 
that the interior decoration was completed. It's a narrative of devotion and artistry, having been recognized as a national monument on May 3, 2013. Its neighboring church, Igreja do Carmo, which began its construction in 1752, shares this status. Between them lies the Casa Escondida do Porto, a mere one meter in width, connecting them in an unexpected twist of architecture and history. The once convent-bound church now serves a new purpose, with the Guarda Nacional Republicana making its home within its historic walls. Visitors are drawn not only to the Igreja dos Carmelitas for its Baroque architecture and stunning gilded woodwork, but also the intricate azulejos that tell tales across its surfaces. The Igreja do Carmo outshines with its rococo facade and lavish interiors, while the Capella das Almas displays over 18,000 azulejos depicting the lives of St. Francis and Claire. 19. Foss Foss is a captivating district uniquely positioned where the Douro River meets the Atlantic Ocean. The district's name, meaning mouth in Portuguese, highlights its geographical significance at the river's mouth. As you move along the river, traditional Habelo boats are a common sight. Green spaces such as Jardim do Paseio Alegre and Parque da Cidade offer peaceful retreats within the urban setting, providing spots for relaxation and leisure. The Fortaleza de São João Baptista da Foz, a 16th century fortress, is a unique attraction that not only offers historical insights but also panoramic views of the area. The Farol de Figueiros lighthouse stands guard over the coast, guiding ships for more than a century with its steadfast beam. And the Pergola da Foz, known for its Art Deco details, is a scenic pathway along the coast, ideal for evening walks and people watching. Number 18, Cellars and Vineyards. In Porto, Portugal, the experience of exploring cellars and vineyards unfolds with a unique blend of history and scenic beauty. The city of Vila Nova de Gaia, located in the south bank of the Douro River, serves as the primary stage for this exploration, directly across from Porto. The region, especially the Douro Valley, is not only recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, there are a variety of cellars and vineyards to explore, each offering its distinct charm and insights into the tradition of port wine production. Caves Fajera, one of Porto's oldest and most prestigious port wine cellars founded in 1751, invites guests to explore its rich history through tours and tastings. San Deman, renowned for its informative tours and beautiful grounds, and Calem, which combines wine tours with traditional fondo music performances in the evenings. Churchill's presents a more modern setting for tasting signature and vintage port wines, while Croft, one of the oldest producers, offers unique tours that showcase the intricacies of port wine production. These experiences not only introduce you to the diverse range of port wines, including ruby, tawny, and white, but also to the process behind their creation. This process involves fermenting a blend of red grapes and then fortifying the wine with brandy, a technique that has been perfected over centuries. 17. Avenida dos Aliados You're walking down Avenida dos Aliados in Porto, Portugal. This grand avenue connects the historic center with the modern districts of the city, serving as a focal point of Porto's cultural life. Here, people gather to celebrate major events, enjoying the outdoors and the company of each other. On sunny days, the avenue is alive with residents and tourists alike, sitting at terraces for a refreshing drink under the shade of tall trees. Avenida dos Aliados was built in the 19th century, commemorating the alliance between Portugal and England. It's lined with impressive buildings such as the Porto City Hall and the São Bento Railway Station, known for its stunning azulejo tiles. This avenue is a favorite spot for enjoying the scenery and engaging in people watching while also hosting parades and other public events, adding to its lively atmosphere. 16. Palacio Cristal Gardens Strolling through the Palacio Cristal Gardens transports you to the 19th century. The gardens, designed during a time when the Crystal Palace stood as a beacon of innovation. The Crystal Palace, constructed in 1865 for the International Exhibition of Porto, was a marvel of glass and iron, drawing inspiration from London's Crystal Palace. Thomas Dillon Jones, an English architect, brought this vision to life, showcasing exhibits from across the globe. Despite its demolition in 1951, the essence of the palace lives on through the gardens. The gardens themselves are a living mosaic of diverse attractions. The Rose Garden, with over 500 varieties of roses, offers a variety of color and fragrance. In contrast, the Romantic Garden provides a serene escape with its winding paths, waterfalls, and hidden grotto. The Belle Epoque style tea house presents a stunning view of the Douro River, making it a perfect spot for relaxation. And the Rosa Mota Pavilion stands as a contemporary venue for concerts and exhibitions, adding a modern twist to the historical landscape. 
peacocks roam the gardens freely, their vibrant plumage adding a dynamic element to the serene atmosphere. You can enjoy a variety of activities, from leisurely walks and bike rides to picnics among the lush greenery. The Rose Garden and the Romantic Garden are highlights, while the Tea House offers a unique dining experience with a view. 15. Igreja do Carmo the Igreja do Carmo stands as a Baroque masterpiece from the 18th century, renowned for its exquisite azulejo tile facade. This church is not only a visual feast, but also a historic marvel, linked to its sibling, the Igreja dos Carmelitas, by a remarkably narrow house, merely a meter wide. This unique structure was originally constructed to ensure separation between the two convents, serving as a residence for nuns. The interior of Igreja do Carmo is a spectacle of opulence, adorned with detailed gilded wood carvings and expressive paintings. It houses a significant collection of religious art, including sculptures, paintings, and textiles, each piece telling its own story of faith and artistry. Not far from these architectural gems, the Fountain of the Virtues offers serene beauty amidst urban settings. If you're looking to experience the essence of Porto, the Jardins da Cordo Aria provides a tranquil escape with its array of trees, plants, and sculptures. And exploring the food scene is a must in the Hibeira district, where traditional Portuguese cuisine meets the charm of riverside dining. 14. São Francisco Church In Porto, Portugal, the Church of São Francisco stands out in the historic city center, close to the Hibeira district and the Palacio da Bolsa. The church, built in the 14th century by the Franciscan Order, is considered one of the most important Gothic monuments in Portugal. Over the centuries, it's seen several renovations, resulting in a blend of architectural styles from Gothic to Baroque. Recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Church of São Francisco holds a significant place in Portugal. The church itself is a highlight, known for its stunning interior adorned with intricate Baroque decorations. This includes gilded woodwork, azulejos tiles, and elaborate altarpieces, capturing the attention of anyone who walks through its doors. The Golden Chapel, covered in over 500 kilograms of gold leaf, is a remarkable example of Baroque art in Portugal. And the São João Baptista Chapel, featuring Manuelin-style architecture, displays beautiful sculptures and intricate stonework. Here, you have various activities to choose from. Attending a mass or service allows for an experience of the church's spiritual atmosphere. Guided tours provide you insights into the history and architecture of the church. Climbing to the top of the bell tower offers panoramic views of the city and the San Francisco Church Museum is another attraction, showcasing a collection of religious artifacts. 13. Mercado do Boliao the Mercado do Boliao is a historic market located in the city center of Porto. It operates within a neoclassical building that has been a focal point of local trade since its inception. The market's origins trace back to 1839, named after a small creek that once flowed through the area. By 1914, the market found its home in the structures we see today, serving as a vibrant marketplace for over a century. With two levels filled with over 80 vendors, the market offers a wide variety of products. Shoppers can find fresh produce, fish, meat, and wine, providing a comprehensive shopping experience. In addition to these offerings, the market houses several cafes and restaurants, creating a lively atmosphere for both locals and tourists. Among the highlights are the fish stalls, renowned for their selection of fresh seafood, including cod, octopus, and sardines. The produce stalls complement these with a variety of fruits and vegetables, along with local specialties such as chorizo and queijo de seda. The market also features tascas, or traditional Portuguese restaurants, where visitors can taste local dishes like francesina and pastel de nata. 12. Sejalves Located in the eastern part of Porto, about 3 kilometers from the city center, Sejalves offers a unique blend of natural beauty. Since its acquisition by the Portuguese government in 1989 and its opening to the public in 1999, Sejalves has become the second most visited museum in Portugal. The estate spans 18 hectares and includes a park, a villa, and a contemporary art museum, all overlooking the Douro River and the city. The centerpiece of the estate, the Sejalves Museum, was designed by the renowned Portuguese architect Álvaro Siza Vieira. It houses a significant collection of modern and contemporary art, featuring works by artists such as Vieira da Selva, Paul Rigo, and Francis Bacon. This museum not only presents an impressive array of artworks, but also serves as a focal point for art lovers seeking to immerse themselves in the creative expressions of the 20th and 21st centuries. Adjacent to the museum is the Casa de Sahalves, an art deco villa built in the 1930s. Originally the home of the Sahalves family, the villa now opens its doors to the public, showcasing a collection of decorative arts and furniture that reflects the luxurious lifestyle of its former inhabitants. The villa's history and architecture provide a fascinating glimpse into the past, complementing the modern and contemporary focus of the museum. 
11. Sao Bento Sao Bento is an exceptional destination located within Porto's historical center. As a UNESCO World Heritage Site, it's Sao Bento Railway Station known for its architectural significance and marks the central point of this region. Among the must-visit sites is the Sao Bento Railway Station itself, adorned with over 20,000 stunning azulejo tiles that depict historical scenes, making it a visual masterpiece. Another significant landmark is the Mosteiro da Sao Bento da Vitoria, a 16th-century monastery that showcases Baroque architecture along with a serene cloister garden. The Hibeira district offers a picturesque waterfront setting with colorful houses, quaint restaurants, and lively street performers, while the Palacio da Bolsa, a neoclassical building, provides guided tours of its impressive architecture. As a UNESCO World Heritage Site, Sao Bento is recognized for its architectural and cultural significance, serving as a lively area for local artisans and offering unique souvenirs and handcrafted goods. 10. Hibeira Hibeira stands on the eastern bank of the Douro River, central to Porto's Old Town. Its history is woven through narrow, cobbled streets leading to a riverfront adorned with colorful 18th-century townhouses, their facades decorated with azulejo tiles that reflect centuries of tradition. Here, the Ponte de Dom Luis I bridge dominates the landscape. This double-decker structure, designed by Theophile Seric, a collaborator of Eiffel, provides stunning views across the city and river capturing the essence of Porto in a single glance. Across the river, Villa Nova de Gaia presents the world of port wine production. Wine lodges open their doors for tours and tastings, offering insights into the rich heritage of one of Portugal's most famous exports. Not far away, the Palacio da Bolsa showcases neoclassical architecture with its opulent Arab room, recognized by UNESCO for its significance, and the Sao Francisco Church with its lavish Baroque interior and Casa do Infante, a 14th century palace now housing the Port Wine Museum, are key sites, offering views and history that span the ages. Activities in Hibeira encourage you to explore its streets, immersing in the local atmosphere and architecture. Dining by the river offers a taste of Portuguese dishes against the backdrop of the Douro, while also taking boat cruises, providing a fresh perspective of the city from the water, including the iconic bridge. 9. Igreja da Santa Clara The Igreja da Santa Clara stands out as a remarkable piece of 15th century architecture. This Catholic church, built in 1416 by King John I for Queen Philippa of Lancaster, showcases elaborate gold-plated design work in the Baroque style. Originally part of a convent, which was the richest in Portugal, and closed in the 19th century, the church is now transformed to a popular tourist destination, inviting everyone to explore its historical and artistic significance. 8. Mercado Bom Suceso You walk into Mercado Bom Suceso, a bright indoor market in Porto's Boa Vista area, close to Casa da Musica. Opened in 1952 as a fresh food market, it has evolved into a diverse marketplace. This place is alive with the energy of vendors selling fresh produce, clothing, and the smell of local food from stalls. It offers more than just shopping. There are cultural performances that add to the lively atmosphere. The layout is straightforward yet interesting. Restaurants dominate the ground floor, serving up a variety of dishes that reflect the local flavor. As you move to the first floor, shops take over, offering everything from souvenirs to artisan goods. There's also a hotel, making it convenient for visitors to stay close to the action. Among the must-visit spots are Casa de Santo Antonio, for its traditional Portuguese food, New York slices for burgers, Nevedos for pastry, and Cofetaria Mora for traditional pastry again. Gourmet shops dot the area, providing a chance to take some of Porto's tastes home with you. 7. Livraria Lelo Walking through the historic center of Porto, Portugal, you arrive at Livraria Lelo on Rua das Carmelitas 144. This bookstore, built in 1906, is a standout for its neo-Gothic architecture, featuring an ornate facade, stained glass windows, and an iconic red double staircase. Rumor has it, this staircase inspired J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series. Due to its popularity, the bookstore has a timed ticketing system to manage the flow of visitors. Tickets can be purchased online or at the bookstore. Nearby, the San Francisco Church, known for its gilded Baroque interior and carved woodwork, and the Clerigos Tower, offering panoramic city views from its summit, adds to the area's attractions. The Hibeira district's narrow streets and colorful houses along the Douro River, as well as the Palacio da Bolsa, with its opulent neoclassical architecture, are also worth exploring. Inside Livraria Lelo, the extensive collection of Portuguese and international literature invites avid readers. The bookstore's grand interior, from the detailed woodwork to the stained glass windows, is a visual feast, 
you can learn about the bookstore's significance and history on guided tours or attend cultural events like author talks and book signings. And the cafes within the bookstores offers a quiet spot to enjoy coffee or tea with a pastry, rounding off the visit with a relaxing break. 6. Cabela das Almas Strolling down Rua da Santa Catarina in Porto, you're greeted by the Capella das Almas, known for its captivating blue azulejo tiles. These tiles, added in 1929, illustrate the lives of St. Francis of Assisi and St. Catherine, making the chapel a standout example of Baroque architecture. This site has evolved from its 18th century origins, built over a 16th century cemetery, to a recognized UNESCO World Heritage Site, drawing attention for both its historical significance and its aesthetic appeal. The intricate blue and white azulejo tiles were the vision of artist Eduardo Leche, realized through the craftsmanship of the Viúva Lamego Ceramics Factory in Lisbon. Over 16,000 tiles adorn the chapel's facade, each contributing to the narrative depicted on the walls. A stained glass window above the entrance adds to the chapel's allure, depicting the souls in purgatory cleansed by Christ's blood. 5. Estadio do Dragao The Estadio do Dragao stands as a significant landmark. Located in the Campania Parish, this stadium is the home ground for FC Porto, a football club with a storied history and a deep connection to local fans and sports followers worldwide. The Dragon Stadium, as it's affectionately known, is a symbol of pride and a focal point for community gatherings. One of its most memorable moments was hosting over 80,000 spectators during a match between FC Porto and Benfica in 2005 setting a record for attendance at a Portuguese league match. Within the stadium complex, the FC Porto Museum offers an immersive look into the club's history. Trophies, memorabilia, and interactive exhibits detail the club's achievements and milestones. Additionally, stadium tours offer unique access to areas typically reserved for players and officials, such as the changing rooms, press conference rooms, and VIP boxes, providing insights into the stadium's design and function, highlighting its importance beyond hosting football matches. Attending a live football match at Estadio do Dragao is a highlight, where the atmosphere reflects the passionate Portuguese football culture. On non-match days, the stadium occasionally hosts concerts and shows, adding to its role as a cultural venue. 4. Igreja de São Francisco The 14th century Franciscan church, Igreja de São Francisco, stands in the historic center of the city, a place so rich in history it's recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The church's interiors are a spectacle of Baroque altarpieces and gilt wood, glowing with the use of over 300 kilos of gold dust in its decoration. The lavishness extends to the Tree of Jesse, a detailed wooden sculpture depicting the genealogy of Jesus, showcasing the artistry of the era. Beneath the church, the catacombs holds the remains of Franciscan monks and members of Porto's wealthiest families, adding a layer of mystery with tales of hauntings by the monks. Originally built in the Gothic style, the church underwent extensive renovations in the Baroque style, reflecting the changing taste and artistic trends over the centuries. Despite its closure at one point due to its extravagant ornamentation amidst surrounding poverty, the church remains a focal point of cultural and historical significance, offering a glimpse into the past complexities and the enduring allure of spiritual and artistic expressions. 3. Cais da Ribera Strolling down the banks of the Duo River, you enter Cais da Ribera, recognized by UNESCO for its historical significance. This neighborhood captivates with its colorful houses and narrow streets, creating a lively atmosphere that reflects its storied past. Once, it served as a crucial port for trade between Portugal and other European countries, with merchants and fishermen building their own homes along the waterfront. These houses now play host to traditional restaurants and shops, adding to the area's charm. The waterfront is lined with Ibera wine bars, where sampling some of Portugal's renowned wines becomes an experience in itself. Walking along the riverfront provides stunning views of the Douro. The boat tours offer a different perspective on the city's beauty. Museums throughout the neighborhood tell the tales of its rich history, while dining in one of the traditional restaurants immerses you in the local culture. Wine tasting sessions in the area provide a perfect ending to the exploration, allowing for a deeper appreciation of Portuguese wines. This visit to Cais da Ribeira offers a blend of historical discovery and enjoyment of contemporary local life. 2. Duro River The Duro River stands as a symbol of Porto's history, culture, and lively spirit. This river, originating in Spain and meeting the Atlantic Ocean at Porto, is not merely a waterway. 
It's the essence of the region, wrapped in a scenic embrace of dramatic gorges, colorful houses, iconic bridges, and terraced vineyards. The Douro's name, deriving from the Celtic word for water, hints at its ancient roots. The river's role in wine transportation, facilitated by the distinctive Habelo boats, highlights a rich history of navigation and commerce. As it carves its path, exploring the Hibera district unfolds a world of cobbled streets lined with houses adorned in azulejos tiles, echoing the area's vibrant atmosphere. The Dom Luis One Bridge, a double-decker marvel, offers breathtaking city and river views. A hike to Serra do Pilar rewards with panoramic views of Porto, the Douro, and the ocean. Meanwhile, the port wine cellars and Villa Nova de Gaia invite visitors to explore the nuances of winemaking through guided tours and tastings. Activities along the Douro range from river cruises on traditional Habela boats, offering a unique perspective of Porto's beauty, to more intimate experiences like kayaking or stand-up paddleboarding. Wine tasting becomes an exploration of local flavors, while evenings resonate with the soulful sounds of fado music, encapsulating Portugal's melancholic yet captivating traditional melodies. The sunset cruise transforms the river into a canvas of vibrant hues, marking a perfect end to the day. 1. Casa da Musica Casa da Musica stands out as a pivotal cultural landmark in Porto, reflecting the city's commitment to art and music. This 12-story concert hall, crowned with a top-floor restaurant, it came to life from Porto in 2001. The European Capital of Culture project, through Rem Koolhaas's innovative design and completed in 2005, it's architecture that breaks the mold with a nine-floor high asymmetrical polyhedron covered in white cement tiles presenting a modern facade that has become one of Porto's most significant cultural venues. Located in the Boa Vista district, close to Praça Mocinho de Albuquerque, Casa de Musica is set on a spacious plaza, well connected by public transportation, making it accessible for visitors and locals alike. The building itself is a centerpiece for a variety of musical performances, ranging from classical to contemporary, housed within its main auditorium that accommodates 1,300 guests. Apart from enjoying live performances, visitors have the opportunity to explore the building through guided tours, offering insights into its unique architectural elements and history. The top floor restaurant provides panoramic views of the city, complemented by a menu of Portuguese dishes, enhancing the experience. And the educational center within Casa de Musica offers workshops and exhibitions, enriching visitors' understanding of music and its role in culture. If you're looking for any tips to enhance your own personal travel and help you manage your travel budget more effectively, click the link in the description. And remember to like and subscribe to help our channel grow.